Hi guys, I'm Eileen. Today, I want to talk about the luxury handbags that were once a big hit, but now we don't see them as much anymore. So these are the handbags every fashion blogger or YouTuber was recommending. So they might seem like the best investment pieces at one point, but now it really feels like the trends are cooling down. This is not surprising because a lot of luxury handbags can do really well for a number of years, but not many of them will become a true classic, like the Chanel classic flaps for example. Personally, I don't think we should follow trends blindly anyway, but the rise and fall of a certain handbag trend can really affect the resale values of your pieces. So if you're interested in buying any of these handbags, I hope this video will help you decide if you should still go ahead. First of all, let's talk about Gucci. I feel like with Gucci, they are always coming out with new designs. Sometimes it can feel a bit hard to keep up. In fact, if you go on their website, there are so many handbags to choose from. But the Gucci Marmont has been around for a few years and it feels like a classic collection for Gucci now. I think generally, the Gucci Marmont is a nice design. I especially like their espadrilles and their bucket bags, but I'm not really into the Gucci Marmont flat bags. I think the Gucci Marmont is unique in the sense that it has a more casual take on flat bags. I mean, most luxury flat bags are quite structured. So for example, the Hermes Constance, the Louis Vuitton Twist, and the Chanel Classic Flaps. Whereas the Gucci Marmont flat bag is quite soft and almost spongy, so it certainly has a more relaxed feel to it. The lack of structure also means this bag can fit quite a lot, so it's certainly a very wearable and practical handbag. And considering the price point is quite friendly compared to other luxury handbags, I can understand why the Gucci Marmon got so popular so quickly. Personally, I was a bit put off because the bigger sizes, like the size medium and the size large, can look a bit saggy and almost wonky on some pictures. I might be a bit old school, but I feel like a flat bag should have a certain silhouette and I just don't find the Gucci Marmon version very appealing. And to top it off, the hard stitching on the back just looks a bit out of place and feels quite unnecessary. I hope this doesn't offend anyone, but I feel like the Gucci Marmon design is too contemporary to really stand the test of time. In fact, it really feels like the trend is going. I mean, when a new collection is launched, sometimes it can stick around for a number of years and eventually become a classic. For example, the Louis Vuitton Capucines, but I don't feel like Gucci Marmont will do the same. In fact, it feels like even people who raved about these handbags don't wear them as much anymore. But let me know if you have the same feeling. The next one is also a collection from Gucci, which is the Dionysus. When this collection first came out, it was a big hit. I used to see so many unboxing videos and people would compare this bag to the Chanel classic flaps, which really is a fair comparison because the Gucci Dionysus comes with an inside double flap as well. In fact, the size medium is quite comparable to a Chanel jumbo flap. I've heard some really good reviews about the Gucci Dionysus. A lot of people say these bags are really well made and good value for money, especially considering the Chanel classic flaps cost a bomb now. Apparently, the Gucci Dionysus can feel quite heavy because of the hardware and the leather compartments on the inside. Anyway, I think Gucci has done a very good job on their monograms on these pieces because they don't look tacky or too loud. The suede leather also really helps to soften the look of these handbags. So I think this collection has a very lovely aesthetic with a touch of vintage feel. As a shoulder bag, I think the size medium and the size small drop at a very good place, which is just above the hip area. But the chain for the size mini looks a bit too long if you want to use the bag as a shoulder bag. If I had to pick one, I would definitely go for the size small because it just looks like a lovely size and the chain looks the right length. Compared to the Gucci Marmont, I think 
the Gucci Dionysus feels better quality and craftsmanship but the Gucci Marmon looks like an easier bag to use because it is lighter and can fit quite a bit more. Between the two collections, I would say the Gucci Dionysus looks more classy and should make more of a statement piece. At the moment, the Gucci Dionysus is like a classic or the permanent collection for Gucci, but I feel like Gucci is still missing that one masterpiece that truly defines or represents the brand. So for example, Hermes has the Kelly and the Birkin, Louis Vuitton has the Neverfull and the Speedy, and Chanel has reissue and classic flaps. But Gucci just feels a bit all over the place. Essentially, I don't think the trends for both Gucci Marmont and Gucci Dionysus will last, but this is just my personal opinion and I welcome any suggestions. The next luxury handbags I want to talk about are the Celine luggage totes. When this collection was launched in 2010, it was a huge success. Every celebrity was carrying one and it was nearly impossible to find these bags in any colors or sizes. But now you can actually order one online, so it just shows you how times have changed. I previously had a Celine Nano and I have to say the quality was amazing. So I have no complaint about this collection. I think Phoebe Philo has done a great job during her time at Celine. She really brought Celine back to life. I still think the Celine luggage totes are beautifully designed and crafted, but sadly, this collection has lost its appeal for a lot of people. Truthfully, I don't think these bags are that much in fashion anymore, but that doesn't mean they are not worth the money. I think if you're really into Phoebe's design and Celine's craftsmanship, these bags can be really good value for money. But just be aware, if you change your mind in the future, the resale values will not be great. Next, let's talk about the Givenchy Antigona bags. These handbags probably don't need any introduction either. When I first saw this bag, I thought it looked a bit masculine. It just feels like a bag made for women who always have it all together and dress very fashionably. It's hard to explain, but it just feels like there's a sense of empowerment to these handbags. The silhouette of the Antigona looks very modern and stylish. I've seen some amazing Instagram pictures where people style this bag with a leather jacket and a pair of over-the-knee boots and they just look so chic. Personally though, I've never thought of getting these handbags because the shape looks quite structured and a bit bulky. So I've always wondered if the bag would feel like it's in the way, especially because the shoulder straps for the size medium and the size large look quite short. The Givenchy Antigona has been around for nearly a decade, so they've done really well. In fact, if anyone mentions the brand Givenchy, the only handbag that will cross my mind is the Antigona. So I'm sure Givenchy will be keeping this collection for quite some time. Although I am a bit worried they might not stay in fashion forever because the design is so modern and contemporary. Another luxury handbag collection that was really trending at one point are the Prada Galleria Safiano handbags. These were like the bags to get back then because every fashion blogger seemed to have one. For me, I've always thought this collection doesn't look very exciting because the shape looks a bit formal, almost like a work bag. So I don't think it will be a very versatile handbag, especially because I wear very casual most days. In terms of leathers, I usually quite like textured leathers. For example, I really enjoy the Epson leather from Hermes, but I just find the Safiano leather used on this collection a bit dull and almost plasticky. Funny enough, I actually really like the Prada Panier collection, which uses the same kind of leather. I think the Safiano leather really complements the shape of these handbags. Anyway, another thing that bothers me a bit about the Prada Galleria is the monogram lining used on the inside. It just doesn't feel or look luxurious. I know Prada uses the same kind of material for their other classic handbags, 
but I personally feel there's room for improvement. Essentially, I think the Prada Galleria is really losing its popularity, especially because at this price point, we now have so many other beautiful options to choose from. And to be honest, I'm quite surprised they are still available. There you have it. Those are my thoughts about some of the luxury handbags that were really trendy at one point. Essentially, I think the trends for these handbags are really winding down. But as Coco Chanel said, fashion comes and goes, only style remains. So if you absolutely love these handbags for what they are, and you think they go with your personality and dressing styles, then go for it. But just be aware, if you change your mind in the future, you might lose quite a bit of money. So that's it from me. I hope you've enjoyed the video. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I will see you in my next one. Have a nice day.